Indeed, on 7th August 1956, the UP, which is known as the United Party, which is a successor of the UGCC, opposed and walked out of parliament when Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was moving the motion of destiny, which was the declaration of Ghana's independence. On 7th August 1956, Kwame Nkrumah was prime minister and he was moving the motion for full independence for Ghana and the United Party, which was an, a successor of the UGCC, walked out of parliament because they said they didn't want to be part of the declaration of independence. And so how can people turn around now and say that they collectively were founders of this nation, Ghana? This false equivalence by elevating figures whose contributions, while important, did not match the transformational and radical leadership that Nkrumah offered for Ghana's liberation must be rejected outright. The hatred and bitterness harbored by those who disliked and hated Nkrumah still erupts from time to time, as ex exemplified in the recent outrage that was expressed by the whole nation at the description of Kwame Nkrumah in the derogatory term of that your Kwame Nkrumah, Sam or Kwame Nkrumah no. Mr. Chairman, Nana Chairman, my brothers and sisters, history cannot be revised. No matter how you fill our children's textbooks with different versions of your history, Founders Day must be a day that recognizes Nkrumah the leader who delivered independence to Ghana and whose vision was continental in scope. The next NDC government, inshallah, in January 2025, will seek to remove the distortions in our history and restore Kwame Nkrumah to his rightful place in the history of Ghana. I commend the people of Nzema Land and Nkrofo for instituting this annual celebration in honor of the greatest African. To celebrate this great man, the next NDC government will recognize this festival, a title Journey to Nkrofo, Let me take that again. To celebrate this great man, the next NDC government will recognize this festival with the title The Journey to Nkrofo as one of the official events on Ghana's tourism uh, calendar. This festival will become a Pan-African pilgrimage for progressives from all over the world to visit the birthplace of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Osajifu's vision for Africa was clear. He saw a continent united politically and economically, one leveraging its resources for the benefit of its people. His call for Pan-Africanism was not just a rallying cry, but a blueprint for the future. In his eyes, political independence without economic freedom was superficial. He advocated, advocated for industrialization, education, and scientific advancement as the keys to African development. Today, the African continental free trade area stands as a testament to Kwame Nkrumah's foresight. Though we are still in its early stages, the seeds that he planted so many decades ago are beginning to finally bear fruit. It may be happening 60 years later, but this is an indication of the profundity of the man's vision. We must therefore continue to nurture these ideals of Dr. Nkrumah of working towards a future where African nations will trade freely amongst themselves with their own currency 
pool their resources together, integrate among themselves as countries without borders that allow their people and goods to move freely without hindrance and stand tall on the global stage. Being someone who could see ahead, he also warned us of the dangers of new colonialism. We must remain vigilant and ensure that Africa's resources serve the needs of its people and not external powers. It was in tribute to the progressive ideas of Kwame Nkrumah that when I was president, I introduced the visa on arrival scheme for all Africans holding African passports arriving in Ghana and also encourage the return of Africans in the diaspora to come and settle at home. We must revive Nkrumah's vision in every aspect of our national life. And this means we must prioritize education, industrialization, and scientific research. It also means that we must tackle the environmental degradation that threatens our future, the reckless exploitation of our forests reserves and by, by some selfish persons for their own gain, we must work to make this cease immediately. We need to commit ourselves to the cause of Ghana, not just in words, but in action. As we stand on this holy ground of Nkrofo, let us recommit ourselves to the ideals Dr. Kwame Nkrumah held. And let us build a Ghana and an Africa that truly reflects his dream of equality, unity, and prosperity for all. The dictum, and I quote, Kwame Nkrumah never dies, was taken literally by his enemies to mean that Kwame Nkrumah was laying claim to immortality. But 150 years after he was born, his mortal body may have gone, but his legacy and his memory continue to live on.